See, we came here with a, <coughs> with a European mind that, that is a controlling mind. How can we control nature? How can we make it work for us? How can we make a profit from the land, from farming, from industry, from mining? All these, you might say, are from the heroic point of view. Australia, however, doesn't work that way. You know, it's not a heroic country. Um, it's a country where nature is the key player. It's not just the background of human affairs. It's in the foreground, and it's going to stay like that. I mean, so much of Australia you can't cultivate. You can't turn it into farms and gardens and houses and real estate. A large part of Australia is beyond that. And so we have to develop, if you like, a spirituality, a way of living with the land that acknowledges the land as the primal entity. It's not just the background to our human lives, it's actually in the foreground. As Judith Wright once said, it's the key player you know, in the Australian psyche. Nature is the key player and we have to learn to understand its moods. Um, one of its moods is to burn. <coughs> Australia has always burnt um, and Aboriginal people cottoned onto this rather quickly with what they called their fire stick farming methods. They would set fire to the land because a, a part of the land, <clears throat> after a while it just becomes exhausted and it needs to be renewed. And whereas in other countries, um, <clears throat> renewal might come through, through water, uh, in Australia often renewal comes through fire. So, you know, we're, we're not called the upside down country down under for no reason. I mean, it, things here do work in reverse. We have to let the land burn because the land wants to burn. And uh, <clears throat> I often feel actually that those terrible arsonists that we all love to hate and who would just love to lynch and, and have public hangings are actually acting on an imperative. You know, they, they actually are taking up the desire of the land to burn. That that Western, heroic, European consciousness hasn't understood that desire and so it has to be acted out pathologically by arsonists who actually set fire to the place. And, and in doing so, <coughs> they are going back to old Australia, if you like. We don't understand old Australia and that's the catastrophe of, of modern Australian society. We don't understand the land. We've brought you know, European farming methods and European concepts and gradually they will disintegrate because the country is not Europe and it's not going to tolerate those kinds of concepts. So we have to learn to live with fire and accept the fact that every, if every few years the land wants to go up in flames. It's, it's its form of renewal. And this whole idea of, you know, staying and defending, you know, I've always found that very farcical, actually. I, I've never been uh, a supporter of this idea. It's a very pioneering, heroic ideal, which um, you know, really creates an uh, enormous sense of tragedy. It's, it's encapsulated the superintendent, Rod Collins, recognised that under certain circumstances, the choice of the stay or go policy offered citizens, the, uh, that it offered citizens might need to be rephrased as leave early or stay and die. Yeah. This talks about, mm -hmm. in a sense, the, the ego and the need to fight fire. Mm. What does that say about masculinity and what men mm. in Australia or the male psyche needs to learn? What's, what's that saying to us as Australians Well, about the spiritual journey? What it's saying to us as Australians is that <clears throat> we live in this fantasy that we can continue to control the land um, and that is a fatal uh, attitude. Um, there's too much uh, macho masculinity in, in our understanding of the Australian landscape and our understanding of the way fire works. We have to accept that fire is the master. <clears throat> it's not us who is the master, but fire and flood, of course, and, and drought. <clears throat> and that these things are bigger than we are, which means we've got to develop a humble attitude and not try to simply, you know, cling to this old, heroic, masculine uh, ethos which uh, talks about defending and fighting and attacking. You know, all this language is completely inappropriate for the Australian landscape. 
Aboriginal people, while they were able to survive, you know, for 40, 50,000 years, they weren't operating in that masculinist, heroic and, and warrior mode. And that's why they could survive, because the land is difficult. The land is, you know, quite hard to, to work with. And unless there's that deep respect for the otherness of the land, um, we don't... Uh, we don't have an Australian culture, we don't have an Australian landscape either.